you go to that new Long Beach Arena, remember? Yeah. And you did a demo with Bruce then. No, I think oh, that was terrible. Burned the footage if you ever see it. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Tea and coffee, any chance? They, they got uh, footage of it. What? Do you want tea or coffee? Oh, no. Okay. Everything I have, like pictures, I have, uh, I, I don't really have it. And the pictures I did take with them. You're not allowed to use it because it's property of inside Kung Fu, it's property of oh, right, yeah. things. It's, it's stuff like that. Yeah. Now. And the, even the footage that I really like, I can't use it because this photographer took it. Because it's really, it's, uh, it's really, you know, everything is, everything is legal. Yeah. And even for, for my own book, they said, because uh, the Bruce Lee estate is really strict on it. Now. You know, really, They're tightened down a lot. Yeah, you know, I just can't, you know, I can't even use footage that, you know, that, uh, you can only use... Okay, let's, 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 let's talk, you know, 72? Rocky's, what, five years older than you, Dad? Five 71. 71? So I'm 66, yeah, he's five years older than me, but James is much older than me. We were. And that's what we were, uh, James Lee was laughing about. He says, man, my gosh, we're following that child. Yeah. Because he was, you know, Bruce Lee was, uh, he was like all of us were at one time. We were very brash. We were, I think, and Bruce was a little bit more cocky than the average martial mm -hmm. artist too. And then sometimes he would step on people's toes. That's why a lot of people didn't like him. Yeah. You know? I don't think anybody wants to be told that no matter what system they uh, train in, their, uh, uh, <laughs> their system isn't very good. Yeah. And yeah. It's full of BS. Or something. And so I think, but I think with him, he's kind of impatient to educate people. And in the process, he might have stepped on some people's feet. And, and you had a background at the time, you'd been training. Yeah. How'd you hook up with him? It was, uh, it was under Ed Parker. I had my, you know, I uh, I was with Ed Parker, and I was a battle under Ed Parker. Did you do Shotokan also? In the service, I, I had Shotokan friends who we just, yeah. you know, we just sparred with each other back and forth, and Taekwondo people. Because when I was in the military, well, I was in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. At that time, we were home in the 101st. But we had a lot of transit people, Air Force. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was a detachment of Marines. There was Navy there for some odd reason. I don't know why. But because it's an Army post. And there was different uh, different Army units were that were in transit. And then there was a home in the 101st. So we just, we always shared. That's why I always thought it was so funny that when I got out of the service, People were so into their staff, yeah, yeah. but you know we would have a Korean instructor teach us, and then we'd have an Okinawan instructor teach us, and then we'd have a Japanese instructor. When I say Japanese, not necessarily Japanese, but Japanese system. Mm -hmm. So we like to share. We experiment, and we thought nothing of it, you know. But then when I got back to the LA area, everybody was like in the, in the camps. Yeah, you're either for this camp or against this mm -hmm. camp. Like a, like a. I like my group. I, 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 like I had Larry Hartzell, I had Scotty Loring, I had Steve Saunders. You know, That's a good group. Uh, it was, yeah. They're a nice bunch of people. I mean, uh, I haven't kept in touch with Scotty Loring for a long time, but I, I kept in touch with Larry Hartzell. I see him every week. Mm -hmm. you know, Bob Cook, I see him once in a, a great while, like once a year or something like that. You know? yeah. Scott Loring? Scott Loring, yeah. That big guy, yeah. played football in college. Yeah. You know, I rated him in 66 as one of our top five fighters in America because he gave me the toughest match I had probably ever, ever had. Did you know that? But I heard also that he sparred Mike Stone once down at the Santa Monica School and he put Stone up beside the wall. You know, it's just a, a rumor, but it was a pretty substantial rumor. He was a big boy, about 210, 215. Yeah, and I had the. Yeah, he is. He's good. There's the other one I thought was really good was Bob Cook. He was actually maybe a shade better than Lori. And then there was Larry Hartzell. And then, but uh, they were all good. You know, I want to say that to, the time <laughs> that he gets into writing, and yeah. they're still both yeah, writing. Right, they're yeah. gonna go, oh, Dan said that, and then I, I want to stay away from you know that because they were both good. Though. Mm -hmm. What was it about Bruce that attracted you, or, or that, when you would? Guy who's been training. I think he's. Uh, I like to think that he was really way ahead of his time. He uh, he boxed, which a lot of martial artists, karate people, didn't like boxing. Mm -hmm. And um, because of the background I had in boxing, 
Like even my uncle, when he was alive, he'd go, gosh, you're going backwards, keep them feet, but your hands are... He says, come on, Dan, you're not really going to use this stuff, are you? He says, keep their feet, but, you know, yeah. go back to the hands and your roots, you know. Hmm. So I did, you know, that's my uncle Cecil, was in New York, but he was... In. So I, I just took that from the vein of salt and said, no, my uncle, this is good. And he said, well, what do you guys do? He couldn't understand why we were there. We call it pajamas, or yeah. sleeping clothes. Before. And you know we went to a reverse punch, and he goes, he just sort of looked at him, just sort of shook, shook his head, and thought I was going backwards, you know. That's interesting. He said, but the, he said, because he, he, he didn't kick. He, oh. And he goes, but the the kick is kind of interesting. Hmm. How were we started messing with the boxing, roughly? I had made a promise to my uh, mother at 14 that I would never go into uh, boxing because uh, the Filipinos at that time period. Uh, went into boxing. There was only two ways of life, you know, because they were minority group. And usually it was, uh, they call it stevedores, farm workers, military service, and boxing. Those are the 44 occupations open to Filipinos at that time. And my mother had seen a lot of Filipino boxers, you know, get banged up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she says, uh, so I promised her at age 14 that I would uh, become a boxer. But I really like boxing. And I grew up with it, you know, a lot of both uncles box, you know, they they love that. So it was just a, it's a cock fighting and boxing was probably the most two favorite sports of the Filipinos. You know, how did it come to be that uh, Bruce had you running his Chinatown school? Did you phase into that, or did he no, just one day ask you? I told him. He says, you know, you got to really share the art with other people, and uh, he was kind of. Didn't want to share at that time because I think he had a bad experience with somebody I don't remember who. You told him that you yeah, had th- th- this art should be shared. You know, I mean, things should be shared. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, you just want to keep it to closed door. And, and uh, finally, he says, "Okay, I'm going to let you open up a school." You know, the first group loosely uh, trained was like in '65, but they were all females. The YMCA group. That's we my first John Fong Gong Fu group. They, uh, because he said that they would not uh, take the system and run away and, and change the name. What was this? Why? Which one? Uh, YWCA San Pedro, and it was like a, I think it was like a, one of those things where it's I want to say twelve week course, and it was on a, a mixture of Kimpo and Jantong Kung Fu. I still I still have some pictures. I, I think I, if I look closely, there was an article on it. So that was like uh, 60, 65. Actually, in essence, that's my first first group because he wouldn't allow me to teach. He just was very uh, not stingy. People said stingy, but I, I think he was more possessive than yeah, that. As everybody were, mm-hmm. was at that time too. That's a different time frame. People thought differently. You know. Did you uh, talk about the Oakland guys or the Seattle guys? He talked. Uh, uh, you know what he told Did he just turn turn his back on them or what? He in the Oakland bunch, uh, the Oakland was, with, the, with the exception of James, I, I don't think anybody really uh, trained that long. And then there was the the two brothers, not brothers, but the Alan Joe and George Lee. They were very close. They were friends of Bruce Lee. But he talked about the Oakland group. The Oakland group is. Uh, the footwork was not there. It, it's more like a modified form of Wing Chun. Yeah. It's sort of like the footwork. It wasn't the boxing footwork. Uh, that uh, And the same thing with Seattle. The transition really came in the, in the LA area. You know, but a lot of people, you know, I don't want to get into politics because people really get upset, you know. And, but I, I remember because I, I used to go down to Oakland quite a bit. See, because I was trained before the Oakland group was, was formed. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we, uh, so when we, when we, when I, I, I could see the difference. There wasn't a difference. You know, they were sort of like this. But to this day, I think you might see some guys that go like that. See, as, as the, uh, as the motion where, where he's more like boxing, mm-hmm. is more from the LA area. Mm-hmm. But other people, an articles have written otherwise. But you know, I'm not into. Disputing where the correct is. There's a lot of. Uh, hey, hi, Sebastian. This is Joel. Sorry. Okay.
there's plus a his, lot of uh, rivalry, you know, yeah. the groups, you know. Plus his, uh, to me, he, he seemed like his system was evolving real fast yeah. then, and it was hard for to, by the month. to be left behind. Just, by the month. Uh, he That's would change his definition of Jeet Kune Do every month with me. He said, Joe, I've got a new definition. Jeet Kune Do is the thusness of the technique. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> he's a, he's con he was constantly changing. Almost every month the curriculum would change. When I first started him, I learned forms. And about one and a half months later on, he told me, forms are out. You know, he taught me, this is the start of me, half, halfway, that's why I know halfway on a praying mantis form, halfway, all the way on the, on the, on the first form of uh, Simum Tao. So he had me doing and forms, and then just threw it out and said, forget that, that's not where it's at. So he says, we're going to do uh, drills that are closely uh, simulate combat. And uh, I think this is it. We're going to hit the heavy bag. We're going to work the top and bottom bag. We're going to work the speed bag. And we're going to work the focus lessons, which at that time nobody was using the focus lessons. Interesting that if it was evolving monthly, as you say, yeah. that it's kind of defined by where it froze at the end, which was yeah. clearly not where he had envisioned, envisioned it based on what you're saying. Yeah, I I think what he was doing was, uh, oh, thanks. I gotta stay up. I'm sorry, guys. I've been working. I had like a 10 hour shift, not a shift, but the teaching. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tend to agree for you that because I think uh, you got to really uh, adapt the system personally for yourself because what works for maybe one person may not work for another person. There is like, I would say, well, I think I'm being honest when I say I can probably use a, 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 the material he taught me. I use maybe 40, maybe to 50 percent. I think the other 50 percent was not within my my reach. Hmm. Like attack by drawing. Mm -hmm. If you don't have his timing, I think it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. If he's faster than you, it's dangerous. Yeah. You expose any portion of your body, mm -hmm. hoping to catch him, and <laughs> he's faster than you. Yeah. Then I think. So I, I think it's it's like football. You uh, you the you have to know who you're dealing with on the method you're using. You know, I don't know if that's a... I would agree with you. I, I always felt JKD was, what he showed me was really predicated on being quick and fast. And I, I just felt like, Bruce, there's no way the average guy can do some of these moves. Mm. Um, especially that, that lead hand strike he had, you know, with yeah. the hand moves first, you know, like they're doing fencing. Uh, that's real hard to teach other people. Yeah, it's, hard. it's real hard, and you got to have a certain amount of genetic gifts. Did you ever see me fight back in those days? Yes, I did. Mean, uh, mm -hmm. So you had a sense of where I was before I yeah. met Bruce, and I and saw you fight beans. Did you fight beans? The black kid. Oh, so you yeah, saw me I trying saw to use JKD? Yeah. Did you? <laughs> 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 I mean, you could see I was twisted up between karate, boxing, and the JKD. I'm sure you could see. Uh, that's interesting. That's the that's the first full contact. I like Mike Stone, like the, the three. I think in, in that era, I think uh, probably you and Mike Stone were were at the, what I call the epitome of where full contact probably would be. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Norris, it's very interesting. And what I have, and maybe if you wouldn't write this up, sure. but, uh, he, uh, he said that it beats. He said that uh, he was talking about Joe, and he was talking about he says, so I have a lot of faith in Joe, and I have a lot of faith in Mike, but I'm not quite sure about Chuck Norris. Mm -hmm. But he's a very nice guy. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That was a, a statement I heard, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that's good to be printed. No, we'll print that off the record. But uh, <laughs> but uh, he felt that Chuck wasn't a fighter. Did he have uh, comments about Joe? But he's good for the tagging. Yeah. So you got, uh, see, my last karate tournament was 1965. I'm going to tell you a story that I thought was so funny. I would came back and I had a, a Charlie horse on the right side and a Charlie horse on the left side. And I had my ribs. I got a second place in the 1965, uh, it was in Hilton Salt Lake City, Western U.S. Karate Championships. That's my last tournament. That was Chuck Norris's first tournament. Oh. And that's why I, I got it. But anyway, I got a second. And I remember showing him the trophy. And he looked at it and he goes, you know why you got that? Because nobody there could fight. 
<laughs> and I thought, well, that was really like, geez, I had, well, just, and they don't make contact, it's a game of tag, and I said, well, if it's a game of tag, then why do I have a Charlie Gross shirt, a Charlie Gross shirt, <laughs> yeah, and a, a Rib Kate shirt, yeah. you know, and, uh, but I just thought that was so funny, he's just, so the, he looked at the trophies, he says, that's nothing. What's <laughs> that? No, it's a Oh, Yeah, he told oh. me that was nothing. Was, <laughs> that's another thing. It's just a, that's just a game of tag. There's no real contact. That's why I thought it was so funny because I, I was <laughs> sitting there with a Charlie horse and both legs and, and, and my ribs really hurt. And he was telling me that was a game of tag. He says, You guys don't hit to the face. It's, you know, it's, so it's it like, doesn't compare to his cha cha trophy. Was that, <laughs> 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 that, so. that Mills Crenshaw's event? Yeah. That was 65. That's where uh, Bob Cook won the Grand Championship. Mike Stone won the black belt, uh, his black belt, but didn't Did Stone get beat by a brown belt that day? That's my student, Bob Cook. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. You got a good memory. Yeah. Bob Cook. That's the one I told you is a shade a little bit better than... Uh, also, that is where Steve Saunders got first place in the black belt and the white belt division. We won the team trophy that, that year. Wow. That's the one, but that's the one where I thought I was so happy, I was so elated, and he was just like, he just said. So you faded out of tournaments at that time? Right there, and I, he told me, he says, that's not where it's at. And I go, okay. But there was no arena. You know, a lot of the, there were some good people there he had, but there was no arena for them to, because it really wasn't taking off the way he thought it would take off, you know. So there was no really, really, really like guys like, uh, he had some good people there, like in the, in, in the chat. We had Daniel Lee, who was, mm -hmm. he was a welterweight champion in boxing of China, not Hong Kong, of China. It was Richard Estillo, he was like a, a Hawaiian champion in his weight division, a Golden Glove champion. And uh, he was in the same way. He, he could have gone professional. Everybody still talks about him. And he had, you know, but Estillo was so good. Just doing mm -hmm. boxing, straight boxing. Yeah. His kicking is maybe not where it's at. But, mm -hmm. but you know, he could do it straight hands against a kicker. I've seen him do that many, many times. And then you had uh, guys like... Uh, like Harso was pretty good. He may not be the most polished, but the first full contact uh, Kung Fu championships, you know, he, he really... Uh, he got a second, but the guy he beat was so... He got disqualified because they were using knees and elbows, and they asked him. He asked him, "Why can you use it?" So you can use knees and elbows, but not that viciously. Therefore, we're disqualifying you. See, because it's a not different that era. Viciously. Yeah, <laughs> it's a different era. So you had the wrong intent with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, okay. that's funny. And, and Bob that, Remmer was. I mean, I think yeah. those in that group. And Bob Remmer was just like he's just a good timing. But like I said before, there's, it wasn't an arena, and, and it really didn't really start taking off, I think, until maybe into the uh, late 70s and into the 80s. That's mm -hmm. when you, you see it really taking off into, because you know, he used to always, uh, knowing Bruce Lee's personality, you know, he was never really could please him, because mm. he demanded a lot of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But his timing was good. His, I think, like I think Joe said, he had he did did things that normal people like trapping. I have difficulty with it, but he mm -hmm. can pull it off. Mm -hmm. He could pull it off, and, and but a lot of people, I don't think people, I think people can pull it off in drills, but in sparring, there you know you 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 can't get like about a low percentage, like ten percent, mm -hmm. that can really pull it off. Mm -hmm. you know? It's fresh in a real situation. Yeah, it, it, because it, it's a different response, because everybody responds differently mm -hmm. in America. You throw, a, you throw a cross or a jab at a, at a person, depending on his discipline, he will respond differently. Like Capoeira people. Yeah. You know? When I saw Banaka, when I, I never thought too highly of uh, Capoeira, because mm -hmm. I thought it would just make me gymnastic, but when you see Capoeira, mm -hmm. you see Banaka, oh, I thought it was go, dancing. <laughs> oh my gosh, he, it, it, it is usable. Thanks. But then again, not too many of his people are like the Echo. Yeah. You're talking about maybe one or two okay. students, they don't have... Uh, but I don't know if that's what the information is you're talking about. I, I got a question. Oh, sure. Could you describe in any words any changes you saw by 
Bruce's influence work with me? Could you see my style yeah. changing over the years? How Definitely. would you put it in the words? Uh, when I first saw you, you were mainly a um, cross behind sidekick, back fist and reverse punch. Yeah. And then when I, uh, when you, uh, I think it was at Jun Lee's tournament. You know, I, I didn't get to see that, but what I told you, they they said you you were more alive on the footwork. That's what I was told. You know, I didn't get to see it. That's Jun Lee's tournament. Yeah, I won at four times yeah. six six through sixty nine. Um, that yeah, they call that the nationals back in those days. So. A lie would be a, a sense of just more fluidness, just yeah, more, more, a more sense of rhythm. The footwork was a lie, was wasn't alive. stationary. As before, when I when I first saw you at the International, that's in '64, um, you were usually a psychic, yeah, back fist, reverse punch. At that time, but '65. I think six, I don't know if it's sixty five or sixty six. Just yeah, you can tell them definitely. When you by the time you fought Baines, what year was it? Baines? Baines was seventy. 70. February nineteen seventy, February seventeenth. Yeah, that's the, the that's a different Joe Lewis than the, that I saw in sixty four. It's so funny. I'll tell you a story, I don't know if you know it or not, but I was this is I was still stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky because I was in the paratroopers at that time and I was just like three months from being discharged. I don't know who saw you because we have a lot of transit. But I had never met Bruce Lee yet, and I never met Joe Lewis, so I, I thought it was interesting. Like one guy was saying the toughest guy he ever saw, the most impressive guy he ever saw was Bruce Lee. And this guy must have been a Marine in Okinawa because he was on transit or something. He said, well, the toughest guy I ever saw was a guy named Joe Lewis. <laughs> This is Okinawa. I guess he was stationed in Okinawa. When he was I was in Okinawa, Okinawa yeah. But I just thought, because I didn't know you and I didn't know Bruce Lee at that time period. He said he had seen Bruce Lee in Okinawa? No, he saw Bruce Lee in Seattle. He yeah. He come from Seattle, Washington. Wow. I think Bruce they came here in 50, I want to say 58, 59. You know, I've heard a lot of descriptions of Bruce through the years. That's the first, I think, the word tough. Yeah, he's tough. That's interesting. Because he got a temper. He's a temper. He's a violent temper. <laughs> violent temper. I don't know if that's good for writing it down, but yeah. he has a fun, if you, uh, he didn't like to be touched. He would just go crazy. See, the guy he fought that, that he beat in that boxing match in Hong Kong, he is not a stylish boxer. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, he would not be like a, a Sugar Ray Leonard. Mm -hmm. If I classified him, he would be like a miniature Joe Frazier. Mm -hmm. And he would be more like a, a, a Roberto Duran, but not the form of Duran, but because he was just a, kind of a slugger too. Mm -hmm. That's funny because for his size, you would think he'd be a technician. Yeah. But when he really got into it, he was like a Joe Frazier. And you, if you watch him hit the heavy bag, because I've been around boxing, it's not the stylish, polished mm -hmm. guy working on heavy bag. It's just like a guy who just really upset about something, you know. Yeah, I've watched those videos. And every every he, shot is a slam. He's just, snap, he's snap, just snap, like snap, power, snap, power, power, power. And that's, power, power, that's power. the way he, he was. That's not saying that when he played with me, he could be very f finesse. Because mm -hmm. I was not in his league. But uh, when he really wanted to, to come to me, he knocked me, uh, knocked me, not out, but, yeah, you know, sort of days now, mm -hmm. on my uh, 28th, it was really funny. He says, come on, let's spar. And I go, sure. And he just, usually he plays, but this one, he just sort of went after me. And just knocked the bread basket when I was laying on the ground like this. And he was just laughing. I go, why is he laughing? And he goes, Wayne, bring out the birthday cake. And they brought out this birthday cake. And he <laughs> sang to me, happy birthday. He oh. says, that's good, because I want to knock you out on your 28th birthday or 29th birthday. So he, th he just thought that was really funny. Yeah, was the actual free spar? Free spar, yeah. He, 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 he liked that. Like I said, he, I'm not, I was not in this class. Mm -hmm. you know? I only saw him spar one time down at Chinatown School. He did Shotokan in street clothes against Herb Jackson. Herb was trying to use Jit Kendo. That uh -huh. was funny as hell. I love to have that on tape. Oh, yeah, he liked that. He liked to imitate Shotokan yeah. and oh, score yeah. with it. Mm. To oh, show yeah. him that it was timing, mm. not necessarily the the, the structure. Although, some, like he said, some structures give better 
a bit more conducive for a better time. When did you first meet Bruce? I mean, what was that? I met him in uh, First International, 64. And uh, that was Ed Parker's uh, elimination tournament. Mm -hmm. That was a, really a headache. I, I remember that tournament, too, because I, I lost to Chuck Sullivan, which I normally don't lose to Chuck. Although was it he's Chuck? my instructor. Oh, yeah? yeah well, wasn't it Chuck Ed's first flight? Well, yes. And uh, it was so funny because I was so worried. But uh, he talked to me after that match, and he told me that uh, he says that for that type of game, he says uh, they cannot. If you're really scoring like the jab, like the backhand, it would be good. But for uh, for that, he says it's it's not really good because they're counting the reapers. But that's the thing that happened with the Sterling Peacock. You know, I'm. He's a California champion, Bone Glove City. And I remember he was crying almost literally because uh, they weren't counting his punch. Because mm. he'd go like this, and he's a boxer, and he, yeah. so he'd go like, like this, and uh, <laughs> they, there wouldn't be any flags. And he got more frustrated as the match went on. Because at that time, if he had a Japanese judge, they wanted you to lock the punch out. Oh, so you didn't get any point. So it was a way to wow. cheat on it. You know, you, you, some guy used to go like this, well, and then just rush it yeah. into the body like yeah. that. There's all kind of little games yeah. that you can play. So I remember Sterling Peacock, who was he was California's you know, Golden Glove champion, light heavyweight. But he couldn't score because he kept on winging that uh, that that cross in, but there was no fight. And he, he would look over at the judges, and the judges, because there was any kind of that. That's interesting. Which is the same, I think it was kind of funny, when the, that Charlie Fuck guy in the tournament, See, they're not going to count any of that stuff, yeah. no matter how close you get. Uh -huh. See, that, and, that, and that was the judging. Because I think in those days, you had to know what the judge want. You look over there and see if the judge is Korean. You look over the judge and the Japanese. You kind of know. <laughs> mm -hmm. You'd have uh -huh. to know, kind of play the game. You know? like, uh, but in, in that time, time period, like, I think like the, uh, Mike Stone was, was uh, Joe, I think you guys pretty much dominated. The, the area at that time. Mm. Yeah, Stone was slaughtering guys, bloodying them up. I would just break the ribs, you know. <laughs> the, Bruce had a long-term effect on me, his mm -hmm. influence, in it, you know, just as he's influenced the entire world. Right. Has he had any long-term influence in your life? Oh, yeah, because I, I think with him, I, I always look for uh, better training methods better drills to make it uh, sport specific for that particular event. Uh, I look in the other arts and hopefully I might find something that would uh, enhance my student skills and then enhance my skills. So uh, I think the constant growing, that's I think the biggest thing that he gave me, mm -hmm. investigation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to be a lifelong student. Right. Like the, the big thing that the Bruce Lee never studied stick fighting. See, I, I debate that too because I when John was saying make little digs, I could see where the digs were at. See, mm -hmm. but I say if you uh, if you say how uh, Dan uh, pick up the stick and you pick up the stick and you try to hit me and I hit me, I think that's sparring mm -hmm. and I think that's training with the stick. So when he said they didn't he didn't train in the screamer collar, I would I take issue with the the way they wrote it in a lot of the books. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's correct because. You know, whether you say I, I box or not box, if you don a pair of gloves and you go in a, in, and go three rounds with the guy, you're training. Yeah. No. So I, I don't see the difference in that. You know. mm. Although they said he didn't train it, but... Uh, you know, it's interesting about that, if you think yeah. about it. It's contrary to Bruce, Bruce's philosophy about not labeling things. Yeah. You know, then there's, there is this big push or need by people to label what he did and how it was uh, categorized by today's standards. Yeah. I think, you see, when you use a Jeet Kune Do, there's, there are so many uh, camps yeah. uh, that, that it's not even funny. <coughs> and there's camps to the camps to the camps that rebel against the camps. Mm -hmm. So you have a renegade JKD, rebel JKD, ultimate JKD, original. Original JKD, <laughs> the only true well, Neo, Neo, Neo JKD. You have all these anti JKD groups. You know, and then the term JKD concept, it's, you know, people are, are 
J.P. Needs principles, J.P. Needs philosophy, you know. So I, we have all these camps. And uh, to me, I, I, could, I could have a wrong take on it, just like having the, having the private lesson with Michael Jordan for three months will not make me Michael Jordan, and that will not ensure me that I will be playing in the NBA. And many people think that well, what they what he can do, like Michael Jordan, would be inspire you if that was your. And that's why I, I, uh, I think that's uh, what I think where he is. He's made it inspirational to, to seek for it. To. What do you think would have happened to the system had he lived? That would be really interesting because maybe it wouldn't have been as popular. Well, that's it. Because see, with the coming of the new whole bar fights mm -hmm. and the coming of uh, the Valley Tudo, you know, the, the, this, this, the martial art scene has changed. But then again, I, I found this too, that sometimes, like I found this with stick fighting, I've trained with like pretty close to 30 stick masters, what they call stick masters. These, these are the guys who have fought, you know, uh, what they call death matches. There are death matches in the islands. Okay. Stick fighting. Some people have died, unfortunately. But studying with one of these masters, I found out, does not ensure me that I would get his skill. Because it, sometimes you can't copy a fighter. And I used to try to do that. I thought, well, I study with this Filipino guy, therefore, I will possess his attributes. I will possess his speed. I will possess his intestinal uh, fortitude. But it didn't work that way. Mm -hmm. But I think every uh, every experience you come through uh, gives you um, it, it gives you uh, what I call uh, it helps you in the field you're in, like. Mm -hmm. In martial art, because I played football mm -hmm. in high school and college, and I was very, very small. I, uh, I thought that the physical tough, toughness and uh, the ability to take punishment, I learned in football. Because when you get up and they, you mm -hmm. get tackled once and you get tackled twice, and if you carry a ball 15 times a game, which I did, you know, and I was very, very small. And people used to really shoot for me because I was small. They were trying to take me out of the game on times. And in, the, in high school and in college, that gave toughness. And that's why I think he liked to spar with me because I could, I could, I could receive the kick. And sometimes when, when I didn't go down, and sometimes I could see it in his eyes where it sort of upset him that I didn't go down. And, and the times I did go down, I would get up. Yeah. And I think uh, he he liked some people. I don't think some of the private lessons he had, they didn't go through that because I watched them. Mm -hmm. They were more like uh, techniques, a lot of the group lessons. But in, in our, on our private lessons, we, you know, we, we worked out together. We, uh, I thought it was so funny because we, we played music. At that time, it was so criticized. Now I look at all this aerobic boxing and Thai bow and, yeah. and everybody's playing music. At that time, everybody was criticizing what he was doing. So I think he was way ahead of in that term. It's like playing music. Yeah. We, I didn't like the music he played. Like it was like a lot of it was cha cha and <laughs> stuff like that. You know, and it fit him, and yeah. we would work out the music. And the music would help us. We oh. They play jazz in some of the boxing gyms now.